Good morning, everybody. This is Christy. I am the Intimate Warrior. I thank you so much for stopping by. Um, today is October the 16th, and I want to begin this video with kind of uh, just giving you a little bit of how I have been feeling for the past couple of days. The moon has been in Libra for two days now, and... Um, And so the moon will enter into Scorpio tomorrow um, for a couple of days, and I will probably do an update about that um, if information is given to me. Um, so we still have the sun in Libra, as we all know. Um, the moon is in Libra as well. Um, the planet um, that is associated with this is a Venus, um, which is an air element. Um, and now I just want to express how I have been feeling. I haven't received, um, information in the past couple of days. Um, which is kind of, uh, when I go to think about this, um, reflect inwardly. It makes sense because this is an intense time of finding out where you reside. Um, with where we currently are in receiving this higher level of understanding that pertains to our higher self. We are dealing with this the crown part. Now, all of us who are upgrading and receiving, you are receiving some form of integration that is still dealing with both um, masculine and feminine. That is what the two pillars represent. Um, regardless if it is working within our crown or our entire body, because we have the masculine and feminine energies that um, reside within our um, nadis. We'll have the masculine and feminine energies associated with our chakra system. So, and of course, our left and right side of our brains, left and right side of our bodies, um, the penal and pituitary. So, if you are at the earlier stages of your process, you are here as well still. You are still integrating the opposite sides, the masculine and feminine energies that are associated with wherever you currently are in your process. But a lot of us here are upgrading um, to a, a level of receiving our higher self. You are still, and I am not trying to downplay that you are not in the process of receiving your higher self. All of this is what we are working towards, the receiving of our higher self. Except there is a beginning stage, there's a middle stage, and there, there's a stage that's even much closer. I have been at this part of my process more than one time here more than two times, more than three times. The cycle is always repeated. We will always come back to a portion of what we are currently working with um, because the planets rotate continuously. We have 12 times a month when the moon is in a sign and every single sign that's associated with everybody, which is associated with ourselves, individually, collectively. And so we have 12 times in the month, regardless, where things move and rotate that affect our chakra system, will affect everything about who we are because of the energetic um, um, counterpart that is associated with it. But now I'm talking about walking through the two pillars of King Solomon's Temple. This is associated here, that I, what I am talking about, is still something you can receive and still be working towards. 
with this type of understanding, regardless if you're at the beginning or at the end, by you observing what I am expressing, especially if you are early on in your process, you shall receive this if this finds great interest in your heart. If you feel a connection with this, if you find it interesting, this is going to be a part of your process eventually. Whether or not you are at this process, and I'm explaining it like this or mentioning it in my video because I don't want you to feel left out. I don't want you to feel like your process isn't important because it is. Your beginning process is going to eventually take you to this process. So you listening to this video, regardless if you are at this current stage, is important for you to hear and witness yourself. So I have really just been experiencing more of the without because I haven't been receiving. And I know this is a time of me experiencing. Because if we can pass initiations or pass um, lessons, um, then that means we can move forward. And that's the purpose of our everyday experiences is to get through them successfully. And so I have, I've been having a few experiences that's making me more mindful and more aware and choosing a greater outcome. I have been having more um, symptoms as well this go around. Um, everything that affects your crown um, it could be your pressure, it could be sneezing, um, congestion, coughing, um, itchy ears, um, itchy eyes, um, drainage, all of that um, can take place because this is the part of receiving again that higher portion of ourself. Um, that's associated with spirit now because we are almost at that connection of uniting and merging with spirit and receiving more of our higher self or receiving our higher self and our purpose. And there is a time frame here. And there is no limit to this time because our time, again, is completely different from God's timing. And it all depends on, on what we are witnessing ourselves and what are we changing within. So on the 15th, I really was experiencing more of the heaviness associated with sneezing. And I got to the point of that sneezing got so intense that I became more feverish. I was in bed about uh, 9 or 9.30 laying down because I just felt heated in my crown and I didn't I couldn't think straight any longer so I took rest I was more irritable on the 15th more aggravated if you will by experiences that were taking place and um, um, I'm sorry, I have the dates wrong. So the 14th, I was more irritated. And so all of the energies that I was feeling from the 15th and 16th today currently poured into me on the 14th for the most part. And so then yesterday, I felt more of that peace, more calmness, more at ease. My experiences that I had yesterday were more subtle, um... I had still a little bit of irritation, but it wasn't as bad, and I, I chose to do things with heart. Um, and again, I felt more of that peaceful um, emotion within myself, and more happiness, um, more energy, especially Later in the evening, I had tons of energy, whereas when I first woke up, 
I could have, you know, I felt as if I could have slept the rest of the day, but I had tons of things to do, and I was able to still get it done without feeling depleted. Um, I felt more connected yesterday, and I wasn't feverish from sneezing. I had sneezing still going on yesterday. Um, a lot of that drainage still. Um, but it wasn't as bad. And so today I wake up and still drainage is taking place, but not as bad again as yesterday. And of course I have the rest of the day to go through. It's only 7.40 in the morning here. Um, but for the most part, I've had a successful um, couple of days. And I understand that this silence a period of silence always comes at um, a great time of receiving and integrating because this is, again, part of being able to get over that threshold. Um, I like to use the term, how bad do you want it, kind of. And um, if you want to use test, by all means, use test if you like the word lesson use the word lesson. If you like the word opportunity, use that word. We have a chance every single day, no matter what, at what choices we're going to make. Are we going to fall for something and allow it to take us back down to the point that we have to start over again, learn that lesson all over again, or are we going to observe it? and allow it to give us an opportunity to be our greatest self. And that's what I attempt to, <laughs> to do. Sometimes it's not easy. I, I totally get that. It's not easy, especially depending on what the situation is, how long you've been dealing with that situation. And it's important to know that the, the lessons that seem to keep coming up for you, um, are the ones that you aren't uh, learning as great. Know that, and you know that. Um, so the next time it comes around, I hope you can pause. And just for myself, I hope I can pause too and, and think about something greater and react greater as well. Um, And so this morning, because I, I haven't been receiving, I, of course, didn't know what to um, really express. Oh, but also last night, I felt uh, my body began to heat up, really heat up, my hands and my feet and my body. It was a hot, but not the hot that makes you sweat all over the place. Um... So I wanted to mention that. And so, I wasn't sure what to talk about today. And then I had a lot of things I wanted to talk about. But then um, something came into my awareness. You know, God works beautifully. Um, and this is actually working with uh, what we are and have been dealing with or what we will be dealing with regardless of whether you were in the early stages of uh, your journey or middle or towards hopefully the end of receiving you. Um, this is what we're working with in Revelations 22, 1 through 5. And it says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more cur curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. 
and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. If I had read this um, a long time ago, I would have been lost. This is where wisdom and understanding come into play. This, this is where opening your heart and allowing spirit in teaches you about God's Word. You know, one, God's Word isn't just in the Bible. He gives you the Word in your heart. If you aren't open to receiving that word because you're so stuck on what you think you have learned properly in your life, either by what you have read personally and interpreted personally yourself or by what you have been taught, you can't receive the truth of the word. And therefore, you won't be living as a perfect witness. Um, I'll talk about the perfect witness in a little bit, or actually I, I have another video about that. But when I read this, and when I read it this morning, because it came into my feed on YouTube as I was searching for my morning music, um, I saw this. Before I begin um, explaining this, I'd like to ask you how you begin your day. You know, I, if you know my journey and have listened to many of my videos, know my past. I used to wake up first thing in the morning and already go, oh, why do I even bother opening my eyes, kind of. I had chronic pain. I probably didn't sleep the night previously as a result of it. And I probably didn't sleep because there was so much um, I was thinking about previously that I wouldn't, wasn't letting go of. So my body was in complete tightness, achy. And I knew when I went downstairs I was probably going to be yelled at. And there was just no point. Um, and so I would lay there, I would open my eyes, and I would complain. First thing, I open my eyes. I complain. Already. And the day hasn't really begun. I put my feet on the ground, and I complain how terrible my feet already hurt. I start walking, and I complain about how tight my body felt. In this cycle of complaining in my own mind even if I wasn't talking about it to somebody else even if I was not writing about it I was complaining in my mind and in my heart then I began as my journey opened up to spirit laying there for a few minutes in just being. And then I had to really make myself think of something beautiful. Because as I was beginning to open to heart instead of mind, my mind wanted to make my heart remember. Pain, of course. Limitations. Regret things that people have done to me um, and so I would try to take something beautiful a past memory or using God and Christ themselves to lift my spirit and eventually I began to 
get excited about getting up and reading the Bible because I could begin understanding portions of it anyway. And it began to give me more hope. So my morning routine was finally waking up grateful and thinking about God's spirit, beautiful things. My son, a beautiful memory, whatever I could capture. Getting up, getting my coffee, coming back and hurrying up and reading. God's word while listening to peaceful, uplifting music. Your choice. You do whatever is good for you. And it kept me in alignment with love, with hope. You know, there's often that word hope. That if you are a limited individual, hope. You know, I hope I can lose a hundred pounds. I hope I can have the love of my life. I hope I'll be a millionaire one day. Or a billionaire, whatever it is. <laughs> or there's hope. There's two different ways that you can use that word. Limiting, because you don't believe in it. Or powerful, because you know it. And if you aren't using your word, hope, properly, pay attention to how you see it, you're saying it, how you're thinking about it. If it's like, oh, well, yeah, I kind of hope. Listen, listen to yourself. It means that you don't believe in what that word means. And I'm asking you to stop using it until you have been lifted within your own foundation and actually believe in the power of hope. So every morning, for the most part, unless there's, you know, something planned early on, I am always listening to something. The TV might be on, but my mind and my heart has music. And now, whether or not I'm reading the Bible or trying to find something else to read or decode God's messages to me, music, when I hit play, is how I connect. Or when I am doing my research about something, whether I have music on or not, that's how I am connecting. Of course, stillness is how I connect and receive as well. But it is my connection part. And I'm asking you to make sure you have a form of connection without that form of connection, you become someone who says, well, I kind of hope. Lacking. Begin your day with something uplifting and stay in alignment with that lift. And it'll only get better and better. And if you fall down because an experience comes around, you have a greater chance of rising above it. But if you're already waking up and going down, 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 it's going to be hard to go back up because you've fallen too far. So I hope that helps. And so I'd like to explain Revelations 22, 1 through 5. Um, the tree of life connects to our spine. Um, and on either side of the tree of life are rivers, our nadis, 
the Ida and um, Pingala. I, I think I said that correctly. I don't know. <laughs> I have a hard time remembering those two. Um, and as they are able to move freely, they are tapping into the 12 fruits, which every month we have a chance at working with those 12 fruits because we work with the 12 astrological signs. When the moon is in your sign, the cycle begins and goes through every other sign throughout the month. Every planet has an associated lesson. Every planet has an associated chakra. Um, and every planet will bear fruit according to your lessons. Um, and when you finally have it risen and passed those lessons or learned your lessons and received the fruits of your labor, which is at a time where we currently are, of receiving the fruits of our labor, you sit, God will begin to rise and sit at his throne, and his name shall appear on the forehead. Because now we are working with the crown. The opening, or now we are integrating the pineal gland and pituitary gland. We have completed the structure of the two pillars. And in time, light will shine. We won't see any more darkness. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. You see, God is bringing this into my awareness today. Because this is mine, and this is yours. This is where we currently are. Um, someone asked me in one of the comments about something they experienced and what it meant. You know, we will have an experience sometimes come into our awareness and it's taking place because it's about to be and I'm now expressing um, whether it's good or bad, this is what's, what takes place. If you see an experience or have an experience and it takes from you, it's because you didn't learn that lesson. If you have an experience and you're thinking, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, you're about to integrate it or upgrade to it, but you have to find an understanding about it. And when you understand it, you're going to receive it. But sometimes we are unaware that we have already manifested the result in our reality. And it's whether good or bad. We manifest exactly what we need, whether our lesson or our upgrade. It becomes because we are ready for it. And you'll get to a point, though, where you know you're in alignment with it. You know why it's here. Um, and I'm trying to think of an example. Well, this, this verse today for myself. 
it's showing up in my feed prior to me integrating it personally because I am about to. And if this resonates with you, it's manifested into your feed first prior to you upgrading and integrating it. So now, because I believed in this, I feel what I have read and understand it now. I made a connection to something, to the Bible, to what I have been researching, to what I am feeling. God speaking to me and saying, you are ready. Now the integration process begins for this. I have passed over that threshold. I've passed through the pillars. And I can make a connection. If you can, go back and read Revelations 22, 1 through 5. And of course, I will place it within my description. And I hope that you understand what it is when you read it. Um, I hope my explanation gives you clarity. Of course, it is a short version. Um, And I'd love to hear your input. This is Christy. I am the Intimate Warrior. Much love, health, and healing your way. Take care.